three have David Curtin and we'll just come speak to us as well. Please give a warm welcome, David Curtin, everyone. Much, everybody. Oh, there's the microphone. You might have wondered what I was doing up here with Jill, um, not saying anything a few minutes ago, but uh, I was just auditioning for my new role as a bodyguard. <laughs> <laughs> but um, I am so encouraged by seeing all of you here and helping to judge the speaking contest that we just had at lunchtime. You just heard Jake there give a wonderful speech, but everybody uh, who took part in that speaking contest was fantastic. There can only be one winner, uh, unfortunately. I wish we could have given prizes to everybody. But um, we heard so much uh, from so many speakers this morning, and we're going to hear uh, more this afternoon. But it's really great to feel a buzz from you in young people who are proud of this country and want to take back this country and make it great again. That's fantastic. That's the end of my speech. That's just the beginning of my speech. Um, that's what we're all about in UKIP. We heard a lot of today about political correctness. And that is something that most people in this country absolutely hate. I'm 47 years old. Uh, I was uh, a young person, I was in my 20s in the 1990s. And that was a really great time to be young for me, I enjoyed it. The Berlin Wall had come down and 9-11 hadn't yet happened. So there was a great buzz among young people and I didn't think, uh, oh, What's the colour of this person's skin? What's this person's sexual identity? Uh, and all these other things that we think of today in terms of political correctness and protected characteristics. And all these things that are written into our laws that say, if you say the wrong thing, then you should be penalised or punished or even dragged through the courts just for saying something which is an obvious truth. I speak a lot about what's happening in education and one of the crazy things that's happening in our country today that no one had even heard of maybe four years ago is the whole transgender agenda and we hear today of teachers who misgender pupils in their class and are then fired uh, for what they've done. They call a girl a girl or a boy a boy and so on. Uh, and this is just one of the things that Gerard was talking about earlier, which shows that we have actually gone insane as a nation. Because in the 20 or 25 years since I was young, to where we are now, political correctness has taken on such a hold and been moved, moved so far forwards in the political agenda that it's almost stifling and suffocating and you feel as you walk around today, what can I say? I have to look, look, watch my back. You never know who's going to be there with a mobile phone, phoning you, you know, taking a picture of you, making a video of you, and reporting it to the police. It's like we're in East Germany with the Stasi, and one third of the population there were employed by the state to inform on each other. Now, we haven't got that far yet in the United Kingdom, but there are people who are hell-bent on making the United Kingdom that kind of society. And that's why I'm so encouraged by seeing the beginning of an army of young people in this room who will not have it, who will stand up for liberty and freedom and the ancient freedoms which we have. Thank you all so much. I must say thank you because you run the gauntlet of useful idiots <laughs> who are in front of the building this morning. And they are useful idiots because a lot of them think that they're doing the right thing by standing out here and protesting. Because our universities used to be places where you could go and expand your mind and you learn knowledge and you come up with new ideas and new technologies. And that still happens in some of our universities, surprisingly, it does. 
But there's a lot of people who go to university and they study subjects which make them more stupid at the age of 21 than when they went in at the age of 18. And then they go and join a progressive, liberal, leftist, cultural Marxist, political parties, and they think that they're doing the right thing. But they're actually taking away our freedom and they're trying to dismantle the very fabric of our nation. And what you, as young people, may not learn in school, and what people in universities don't learn, is that this is a good country. Yes. This is a country. From the Magna Carta in 1215, and we heard from, from early, earlier that uh, King John is buried in Worcester Cathedral down just down the road. This is a place of history. From Magna Carta there through to the glorious revolution of 1688, which set up our parliamentary democracy and promptly gave power to the people so that the people are sovereign in our nation. To the abolition of slavery, in 1807, yes, three centuries of slavery are bad, but this is the first country ever in history to abolish slavery of its own volition because we saw it as bad and we saw that all people are created equal and all people have equal dignity and all people are equal before the law. And on from there into the 20th century where this country and our forefathers shed their blood to overturn and defeat National Socialism, which was a threat to the whole world. And then in the 1980s to defeat Soviet Communism, which was a threat to the whole world. If it wasn't for us standing shoulder to shoulder with our great friends in the United States of America and other democracies around the world, that wouldn't have happened. And who knows, tyranny might have conquered the world, but it didn't. The world is free because of us, and that's happened so many times. But we have been subjected to a continual program of cultural Marxism over a hundred years. Rudi Dutschka was a German student radical in the 1960s who coined the phrase the long march through the institutions, which encapsulates a lot of what cultural Marxism is. It's an easy way of saying critical theory and neo-Marxism and postmodernism and all kinds of other things. It just rolls off the tongue a little bit more easily. But we're in a state now where our freedom is being taken away because of that. And no more so than our univers at, at our universities, where people who just have opinions are being no platforms left, right and centre. And some of the people who have been no platforms in the past, or very recently, are very important people that we need to hear and we need to listen to. People like I am Percy Ali, that you may have heard of. A very, very brave Somali woman who is an ex-Muslim, who was subjected to female genital mutilation at the age of five, fled to the Netherlands and spoke endlessly and tirelessly to try to wake people up about what she saw as a threat to her and to women around the world female genital mutilation and honor killings which sometimes go on in the name of Islam, in the name of uh, different cultures. She was no platforms in the Netherlands, had to flee to the United States, and has been no platforms in this country as well. Someone who the left would normally stand for, up for as a victim because she says something that is deemed to be politically incorrect. Uh, doesn't get a space to share her views. Jermaine Greer is another one, a feminist, and I wouldn't agree with uh, a lot of her views that she had around in the 60s. 
But now she stands up and says that a woman is a woman because of her anatomy and her chromosomes. And so is a man, a man, because a man has male anatomy and male chromosomes. And a lot of these people are feminists who are saying something that is absolutely true, that if you have a penis, you're not a woman. <laughs> they are getting no platforms all over the place because this country really is going insane. And a lot of things that are just simple, self-evident scientific truths cannot be spoken anymore in universities. People who are doing serious scientific research into transgenderism and this phenomenon are being no platforms. There was a, a professor, Lisa Littman at Brown University, who did a very, very good piece of research into rapid onset gender dysphoria, which was quashed and uh, suppressed. But we've seen in this country of the very, very youngest of our children being targeted with an aggressive transgender LGBT agenda from the age of five years old. It's not surprising that for there's been a 4,000% increase in children who are presenting themselves to gender confusion, gender dysphoria clinics. And if no one is allowed to speak up about this, or if no one does speak up, if we succumb to the pressure on us from society, from the political class, from the media to keep silent, a whole generation of children will be affected and confused and will have even more mental health issues than they do at the moment. And I... <laughs> thankful that you are a group of people in the political party that are committed to truth, that are committed to freedom and liberty. I think my time is nearly up, unfortunately. <laughs> but I will say just a few things that you can do. Sign petitions. There's a petition at the moment about the online forums bill which is a private member's bill going through Parliament at the moment. If that gets support from the government, it will mean that administrators of groups on social media will have to, will, will they will be criminally responsible for any content in their group which is deemed politically correct. Sign those petitions, make your voice heard. <laughs> Respond to consultations. Uh, I put out messages over the last month to get you to respond to the consultation on the Gender Recognition Act, which is going to redefine gender in this country if it gets through, even though 82% of people in the country are opposed to that bill. Fill in the consultations. Another one that's coming up soon is that there's going to be a huge review of the government's Hate Crime Action Plan, which was instigated in 2016. They want to update it to clamp down on speech even more than it already has done. There's a whole edifice of laws which have been built up, which uh, have created the concept of hate crime, um, no less than the, the Public Order Act 1986, the Communications Act 2003 that Jonathan referred to before, and so on. Respond to that consultation, make your voice heard, stand up for freedom. Also, stand as a candidate. I see a hundred people who can be candidates in this room. <laughs> stand for our party, get into the parliament, and change it into the political sphere. But also we need to retake the institutions that I was mentioning earlier. The educational institutions, the universities, the judiciary, the, the, the chambers where there are barristers. Become a teacher, become a lawyer. Make your voice heard in those profes professions 
and make them sane again. So that we can make our country great and free once again as it should be. Thank you.